Hello everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I'm your host Stan Rattan and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show where we, I try to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Now I know why somebody told me I should stand up during the shoot instead of sitting down because I wiggle around so much. I try to calm that down. But, you know, I like to sit down better. Feels better. August is Washington Wine Month. My first episode of the month was on Washington Wines. I'm going to continue that right now with three more whites from the great state of Washington where they produce some excellent, excellent wines. Along with many other states and countries, of course. I'm not prejudiced at all. I know that, 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 that Washingtonians have that reputation of thinking that Washington Wines are all of that and nobody else counts. I'm not one of those people, uh, I like all wines, Oregon, California, Washington, wherever. As long as they're good, that's all that matters. Even Arizona, they're coming out with some good stuff. So, let's get started. I'm getting excited to go to Portugal, first two weeks of September. Looking forward to that. Uh, anything else going on? Eh, not really. Just going to continue this Washington wine stuff. Shout out to my daughter. She's getting married. I think I mentioned that in the last episode. This weekend should be fun. Fun times to have. I'm glad she's getting married. She found a nice guy. So, we're going to start off with Robert Carl Sauvignon Blanc. Horse Seven Hills, 2013, Washington State. So there's another big appellation, Horse Seven Hills. Uh, let's get a little close up here. Robert Carl makes an excellent claret, a red blend that uh, I've put away for five to ten years, and it turns out stellar. So I'm excited to try this Sauvignon Blanc. I'm very picky about Sauvignon Blanc. This is $18. Uh, it seems like a lot of wineries now are really going into that zone of $18 to $17, $18, $19, dollars, which is okay as long as the wine shows good. Um, in my opinion, this is my opinion, this is my palate. Okay? I think Sauvignon Blanc should have good acid, good fruit, it should have nice balance. And, uh, you know, it can have minerality, it doesn't have to have minerality, but that acid, that, that, that thing that lifts the wine and kicks the fruit, is really, really important with Sauvignon Blanc. Otherwise, you get a flabby, sort of dull wine. And, you know, I don't know about you, but, you know, I want a little excitement in my wine. Playing with the, the stove enclosure also. So let's see what we get on the nose. Nice little pears and apples. A little bit of melon, like honeydew melon. Interesting, a little bit of uh, like not freshly cut grass, but like day old cut grass. A little bit of a honeydew rind coming through. Let's see what we get on the palate. Round. I'm edging towards flabby on this one. I'm not getting a lot of acid. A lot of apples and pears. That cut grass, uh, fresh cut, cut, cut bleh, bleh, bleh. fresh cut grass element comes through on the finish. The honeydew melon is there. A little bit of lemon lime coming through on the back end. Now I have to tell you I'm disappointed. For $18, it lacks the acidity that I look for in Sauvignon Blanc. 
This kind of reminds me of a cross between an un oak Chardonnay and a Pinot Grigio. Uh, you can get uh, some of those for a lot less money. I'm a big fan of Robert Carl. It's got some herbs coming through on the back end. I'm, I'm disappointed. I'm going to have to go C, C minus on this one. Yeah, I'm going to go C minus. 18 bucks. Very disappointing. Let's move on to the next one. See, not all, you know, not everything from Washington is stellar. Now, remember, this is my palette. If you guys like, you know, and to be fair, if you want to cross between a, an oak Chardonnay and a Pinot Grigio, knock yourself out, buy it for 18 bucks. It's just not what I expected. Now we're moving on. Purple Star. Uh, Columbia Valley Chardonnay, 2013, again. Uh, this one rolls in at $12. Let's get a little close up. There you go, the purple label with the star in the center. Again, Purple Star does a very nice Syrah that I do well with at the store. I see a little golden color coming through on this one. Ooh, butterscotch all over the nose. I say ooh because a lot of people like that. I like it in my Chardonnay from time to time. So it comes from the oak. I get a little like a smoky character coming through, which is very interesting, like, like smoked wood. A lot of pears. A little bit, a little bit of baking spice. Like I get a little bit of terracotta. Is it terracotta? Almost like a nutmeg thing coming through, which is very interesting. I enjoy that. A little bit of apple, mostly pear though. Yeah, very intriguing. Get a little bit of white licorice too, which is interesting. Let's see what we get on the palate. Very smooth. It has that little buttery kind of butterscotchy thing on it. A lot of pears coming through. Well, not a lot. Actually, I'm, excuse me, not a lot. I feel it's a little restrained, a little bit challenged on the palate. This is very light. It lacks a mid palette. I mean, I'm getting nothing. I get a little bit up front, nothing on the mid palette. The finish is very thin. There's paranoids there. It's very light. I'm, I'm, again, I'm disappointed. Two for two. Not liking the Chardonnay. I mean, it's not complex. There's nothing there. I mean, there's there's flavor, but it lacks any complexity at all. Wow, I'm actually really surprised. Yeah, that finish just disappears. I'm going to go C minus D on that one. C minus D, yeah. There's nothing there. I mean, if you want a boring Chardonnay with a little bit of, you know, just a touch of butter, knock yourself out. Like I said, it's my palate. I'm just not going to go there. Let's move on to the next one. This is a project by Dusted Valley. It's called Script and Seal. They actually call it the... Um, well, it has a really funny name by the Blind Boar Wine Company. It's a, sort of a, a partnership with Dusted Valley, which is, a, and this rolls in at $10, Script and Seal White Wine, 2009. They must have made a boatload of this stuff to come in at 2009 still. But this is a sample. The sales rep dropped off to me. $10. Let's hope for better results. 
Wow. This is mostly Chardonnay, by the way. I like the nose on this. I'm getting a little petrol, a little like a rubber beach ball. Kind of a um, baking spice and, and apple. That rubber beach ball is really prominent. That's not a bad thing, by the way. Sometimes those petrol kind of rubber beach ball things are a good thing in a white wine. If you've been watching long enough, uh, hopefully, <sighs> you're not close to 100 episodes. Still don't figure out what I'm going to do. A little bit of pear coming through. Just a hint of lemon, not much, a ripe lemon. Let's see what we get on the palate. There we go. A little brighter, more kick on the mid palate. I get a lot of like mostly apple, a little pear blended in, a little bit of lemon coming through, a little bit of minerality for sure. Nice flow across the palate. Got that nice brightness that kind of kicks it just a little bit, kicks those flavors. That's what acid does. It really lifts those flavors in a wine. So a lot of times you want a little bit of acid in your wine it helps that those flavors come through. That rubber beach ball is still kind of in the background on the palate, making it give it a little bit more of an interesting mouthfeel. Finishes is medium, not not super long, but it's good. It has a Nice balance. Again, not super uh, duper, like I'm not super excited about this. I, I feel like I'm grasping for straws just a little bit. But this is be definitely, of the three, the best one I've tried. And it's only $10. Script and Seal White, I'm going to go C plus, B minus on this one more towards the C plus side. It's not super exciting, but it has some things going on. A little bit of minerality, a little bit more acid. Uh, definitely worth seeking out. It'd be a really nice wine with uh, salmon. Definitely with salmon. I'd have it with chicken, uh, barbecue chicken, no, sans the barbecue sauce. So I should grilled chicken, excuse me, or oven roasted chicken. get a little bit of herbal component. Excuse me, my phone's going off. I forgot to shut off my cell phone. Probably a sales rep trying to get a hold of me for their order. This is my lunch break. They should know that by now. Anyway, I'm going to go C plus on that one. You know, Washington wines didn't shine in this episode, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you spend your wine dollars wisely. So, in my opinion, my humble opinion, you know, the script and seal out of the three is the only one I would spend my money on. Well, that's the way it rolls. Cheers. Here, and uh, I think the uh, next episode will also be on Washington Wines. Hopefully we'll get some reds in there. I do plan on doing a blind event where I put a couple of uh, California against a couple of Washington. I want to do that just to see how they fare. Thanks for watching. We're heading towards episode 100. Cheers, and here's to keeping the snob out of wine.